Hello everyone, I'm Chris Holbert and welcome to my screencast. Today we'll be going through clock lesson number six in the Swift Education curriculum. You can find this by going to swifteducation.github.io, clicking here, coming down to level two, clicking on clock, and we're on the last lesson now. So the lesson plan is some information about it, and the Xcode project, you want to have that downloaded so you can open it in Xcode. So today we'll be going through handling rotations. I'll just open the code now. And let's have, see what happens when we run it as it is now. Fantastic. As we can see, the seconds are updating nicely. Now once you've got the simulator open, you can use command left and right to simulate rotations of the device. This can always also be seen under the hardware menu, rotate left and right. Now, as you can see, when the app is in portrait mode, we've got the app's built-in status bar at the top, as well as the clock here. However, when you rotate, the status bar at the top is, also, is gone. Now, it's a bit redundant having the time visible when the whole point of this app is to have a clock. So we'll want to remove the status bar. Now, generally, it's best practice to leave the status bar in place for most of your apps. However, this is a special case because it's a clock, so let's get stuck into that. So we've got a couple of good opportunities here for updating this. The first is we can go into the view controller. Now, view controllers have a method called preferred status bar. Prefers status bar hidden and preferred status bar style. Preferred status bar style lets you change it from dark or light. And hidden lets you choose whether or not to show it at all. Now, this is if you want some parts of your app to have a status bar and some parts not to. This is a bit more granular, it's on a per view controller basis. So if we override this function and return true and rerun the app, There you go, we can see that the status bar has gone in both orientations. However, we can also disable it on an app-wide basis by editing the app's info.plist file. Here it is. You can also find your info.plist by clicking on your target and then clicking on info. However, I find it a bit more straightforward to edit the file directly. Notice when the app starts, when the loading screen flashed up, you could see the, the status bar initially. So let's get rid of that. Now, making that change isn't done in code because the loading screen is displayed before any code has executed. So we need to add it to the info plist. So let's click anywhere in here and hit plus to add a new entry. Scroll down to status bar and status bar is initially hidden and set that to yes. If you were watching quickly, you would have noticed that there was no status bar when the when the launch screen was visible. And we can remove the status bars on an app wide basis by adding another entry here. called view controller based status bar appearance and if you set this to no it's like taking a sledgehammer to your status bar no longer do your view controllers need to have a granular preferred status bar hidden app wide you will no longer have a status bar now as you can see, it's gone. Fantastic. One thing you may notice, if you continually rotate left, you'll end up in a state where it won't rotate. This is because the simulator is simulating the app in the up upside down state. Now, apps generally don't handle the upside down state because you generally don't hold your phone that way and they don't want to encourage you to do that. And so this is why 
you will see it sideways because it is upside down. If you go command left or right twice, the simulator will now be simulating up the correct way and everything looks fantastic. But let's say we want our app to handle being upside down. View controllers have a method called supported interface orientations. If we override this, we can we can allow the app to handle any rotation. So we want to handle all options. If I hold down command and click on user interface user interface orientation mask, we can see all the options that we can handle. We can handle portrait, we can handle landscape left or right, we can handle both landscapes, and we can handle all. All but upside down is the default, but let's make it so that it returns all. Now, since this is an Objective-C API, and not a Swift one, and Swift version 1.2 doesn't handle conversions between structs and enums, 100% smoothly, we'll have to do a bit of trickery here, but in newer versions of Swift, this may be simpler. So we get the all option, we get the raw value for it. Now the raw value is a uint, so we need to cast it to an int. That's how you can't convert it into an int, and we need to return that. So let's run this and see how we go. As you can see, it's still possible to get into this upside down state where it's not rotating properly. This is because supported interface orientations are a combination of whichever view controller you are in, as well as app-wide configuration via the info P list. So let's make a change here. We can click on the target, go to general, and see the device orientations. Let's check upside down to allow all four orientations. And now since the target supports all orientations and the view controller also supports all orientations, we should be able to run the app upside down. As you can see, I can keep rotating and everything looks fine. So it's now supporting upside down without any hitches. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one.